Hi guys, a uh, bit of a video, not an awful lot in it actually. Like many people, I think two thirds of the country we've got ridiculous temperatures and uh, with that and the old back and so on I've hardly been out here only for short spells, no chip making which is most frustrating. Anyway all this is is odds and ends again. Uh, I've been working on a an RC airplane that uh, I built for a buddy of mine quite a long time ago. Originally it had a, a four-stroke gas motor in and flew very well but he wanted to convert to electric so I've been fiddling around with that uh, lots of small nuts and bolts and fiddle and <laughs> a bit of a pain in the butt. Uh, at one point it wasn't working properly uh, we've now cracked that I think I threw in a short clip to sort of round that off and describe what was going on. The other things are oddments. Um, sorry, I keep shuffling here. <laughs> um, what else? I covered vernier, a vernier again, and um, for those of you who know their vernier, and uh, just fast forward that. But I put a little bit in for Jerry. Elvin, hope I've got the last name right, Jerry. Uh, he said, uh, can you cover the metric aspect? Well, the principle's the same, but I thought, well, okay, we'll cover that as a special. So I did a, um, a quick recap on the inch side and then gave an example of the metric, which hopefully will help him and maybe one or two others. I keep forgetting that over here we're inch oriented and almost the rest of the planet's uh, metric. I've had to use metric but I still prefer inch. I mean at my age you can't change that easily. Not from choice. Then, uh, oh I just showed a bit of material. Pretty boring. But I haven't bought any material for ages. It cost me an arm and a leg because shipping's so ridiculous. So I got it from uh, um, Oh, I gave the name of the company when I showed it. It's a chunk of aluminum and a length of brass round. And then the other thing which I found out from browsing on the net, uh, a very simple way of degaussing, particularly for small things like screwdrivers. So I show that. Actually works damn well. <laughs> so I think it's about it, unless I've forgotten something else I threw in. So, not a very exciting video, again, and I've no idea when I'll get back out here again to do something substantial. It's uh, the beginning of at least, a, what, a three-day spell, super high humidity, high temperatures, heat indices round approaching three digits, it's just ridiculous, and much as I don't like winter, I wish it wasn't so damn hot. Anyway, that's enough of my usual waffle. So we'll press on and show you the odds and ends here. Um, and I won't bother to sign off at the end, I'll just say now. Uh, thank you for watching. Thanks to my subscribers. And hope to see you before too long, but it may be a bit longer than usual. All right. Bye for now. I think I mentioned this in my last video that it was a job I've got to do. <laughs> <clears throat> slightly reluctantly I've got other things I want to get on with but this uh, brief window of opportunity out in the shop before it gets hot well it's actually already sticky and nasty but later in the week it's going to get beyond stupid so anyway what I've got to do and I'm not going to video much of it but uh, we've got a nice nice point four six brushless which you've got to fit in there uh, half decent motor mount and an ECU this is rated for 80 amp so we've got to tear some things apart here and decide how we're going to get everything in the batteries are Absolute big ass 3630C, <laughs> which is awful heavy. This I built this about three years ago. And test flew it for the guy with a gas motor, 
flew very nicely. It's a Cherokee, if I hadn't mentioned it, which I probably hadn't. It's a nice model, good flying plane. I don't fly anymore now because mainly because I can't stand too long and shifting all the stuff around is a pain, but electric does save a bit of hassle. You don't have to carry quite so much gear to the flying field. Anyway, I'll come back later at some point in case it's of interest. I quite forgot to mention <laughs> this is the only flat surface I've got. I haven't got a decent bench, at least my bench is covered in stuff. So they worked the uh, welding table such as it is, cleared some things off it and that's what I'm going to try and manage with. Somehow. Just an update on this project. Oh boy, getting this motor set up. Hell of a game, just about got it centered there. But originally when it had the uh, gas motor it's actually got a firewall offset for a bit of side thrust and I've had to dispense with that with a shim on one side. So we're almost there apart from taking it all apart again and putting it together with uh, thread lock and we've got to come forward about I don't know, five millimetres, quarter of an inch maybe. So that's where we are. <laughs> I'm not showing you much of this because it's not very interesting. But I thought I'd show you the progress as we go. The amount of bad language that went into that and may yet still come was considerable. <laughs> it's absolutely terrible. <laughs> I'm afraid there's a fan running. Sorry about that, it's getting hot again. And in a day or so it's going to be impossible. Um, heat indices of 100 plus. Dew point, I don't know, dew point of 75 maybe. Or <laughs> Absolutely stupid. I'm trying to get this damn plane finished. And uh, it's not exactly a machining operation, but it is one of an old expression, trying to get a quart into a pint pot. This area here used to be the fuel tank for the gas motor. You can't see the front. Yeah, anyway, that was the fuel tank. Well, this is about as good as I can get here. We've got a humongous battery. I think I mentioned earlier, it's 30C, 3600. But then you've got to find somewhere to put the ESC. And these things have to be ventilated a bit, so you can't sort of wrap them all up. You've got to get heat dissipation. Well, there's the ESC, but here's the, here's the real pain in the butt. Let's get, get this out again. So... And this pisses me off. You get stuff supplied with leads that are barely long enough. They, you can't, oh, wait a minute, and I, I can use um, handheld in a minute. But there's very little length from the motor leads, and then we come through with three here to the ESC, which means getting the battery up high enough as well as getting air into the bottom. So I've made two balsa support pieces and ESC is about in the only damn place it can go. But then when the battery's in, you've got these thick cables and we can just about, just about connect up. And then when all that's on, the uh, top has to go back on. I'll just show a handheld just to give the extra info if it's remotely interesting. <laughs> right, sorry about handheld. The rag on the floor was to catch small nuts and washes, if you wonder about it. Well, it took forever to get the motor 
mounted properly so that now we're pretty much on centre. The towel's been refitted so it should go on in its right position. That's the uh, receiver which is actually an old 72 mega I think so it's a bit bigger. So that's how it's going to have to work. So once I've got these things fixed in, um, the next thing is to balance it. And it is horrendously heavy at the front. Wickedly heavy. I'm sure it's going to need a lot of weight on the uh, tail. We'll see. Just to round off on this uh, airplane conversion. Uh, we had the um, ESC actually up here. We've moved it and put the flight back there. But all we had when first tested was multiple beeps and no action at all. But we've actually solved it. <laughs> the guy who owns the plane, Mike, he actually did some uh, digging on the internet. It turned out somebody had discovered that they had to set their endpoint settings for throttle to 100%, both ends, and uh, it's now functional, which is good news. We've had it uh, with the wing on, started balancing, got to finish that. But uh, in essence, that's more or less done, which is a relief. I've got other stuff to get on with, but uh, that may take a while. Right, we're back to the vernier again. Um, those of you who saw the last one or don't need this, just fast forward. Primarily, this is for Jerry Elvin, I think it is. Hope that's right, Jerry. Um, I've put my cheaters on so I can try and get the right lines. Um, just a very quick re oops, a very quick recap on the inch, just again. We've got, there's our zero, which is on the thousandth scale. Nought to one inch. There's 900 thou. And we're not quite 925, all right? It's 925, 50, 75, one inch. So we're not quite 925. So we run along this scale, looking for coincidence which as best as I can see I think that's 8 I'm trying to see close up here that's on the 8 which coincides with 18 alright 0 to 25 but 18 that appears to be the coincidence so it's 18 thou plus the 900 so that's 918. Okay. Right now, Jerry, this is uh, for you, the metric. All right. Zero, 10 millimeter, 20 millimeter, 21, 22, 23, 23 and something. So we run down this scale. 23.3, 23.4, it's actually in the middle, as far as I can tell. So that's 3.5. 23.4, 3, which is 35 hundredths. All right. I'll just do one more time. 10, 20, 21, 22, 23, 23 and something, because it's not 24. Come down here, look for coincidence. Three, five, and four, three point three five, three point five, and that's uh, so as far as I can tell, coincident. Twenty three point three five. Okay, I hope that clarifies it a bit. If not, let me know and I'll run through it again. I'm only doing one setting just to try and keep it fairly short.
never got enough material but uh, it was very low on large diameter aluminum and also reasonable diameter brass so this is 26 inch length of 1 and 3 eighths that's an 8 inch length of 3 and 3 quarter shipping was ridiculous I got it from Speedy Metals in uh, Wisconsin um, they have a lot of well they call it fire sale I think it's all various drops and I don't need monster long lengths even so this was pretty expensive but uh, they delivered very very quickly so I was quite impressed with that a bit more useful material This might be of interest. I've got a um, shaded pole motor I took the rotor out of for demagnetizing things, but I saw this one today. Uh, a guy called Mike Dubrovsky, who's on uh, homemadetools.net. And uh, in fact, uh, Brian, gosh, sorry, Brian, forgot your last name. Brian Stanger, he's on uh, homemadetools.net. And so is Chris, Clickspring, probably a few other people. I haven't been there myself apart from getting emails every day. Anyway, here it is, and it seems to work. All right, the dreaded magnetic screwdriver, which you may not want to be magnetic. So take your inductive soldering iron, this is a Weller, come slowly through between the two sides and keep going until you're well away and then haha there you go let's try on a small one I don't know where this is magnetic let me just magnetize it All right, there's a little one. I'll put that through. Pull away. There we go. <laughs> yeah, I never thought of doing that. For something that's uh, narrow, it's okay. Unfortunately, you can't get an end mill through there, not a big one. But it uh, might be worth remembering, little trick. So that is thanks to Mike Dobrovsky. Great idea.